Hi everyone, I am Lisa with EECC Travels and today we are gonna talk about 15 tips and tricks for cruising with Norwegian Cruise Line. We just got off the breakaway and I just started thinking that this is a good time to let everyone know the ins and outs of cruising with NCO. We have sailed with them quite a bit. We have been on the breakaway, the getaway, the joy, the bliss, the encore, the Prima and Pearl, some of those multiple times. And later this year, we've got sailings on the Jewel and Viva. So we've been there, done that, know a lot about NCL. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is the free at sea. This is what a lot of people question. How does it work? Is it really free? What am I paying for? What am I getting for free? And what is the pricing for the free at sea versus sail away pricing? So let's dive into that. First off, depending on the promo, you're gonna get items included in your cruise fare. These are an unlimited beverage package, specialty dining, Wi-Fi, short excursion credits, and sometimes buy one, get one free air. So let's go back to the first one, the unlimited beverage package. This is the one that a lot of people are excited about because if you pay for a beverage package, it can be very expensive. If you look on Norwegian's website and look at the pricing for this, it's $99 per person per day plus 20% gratuities. So if you drink even a little bit, it's a very good value. Every adult in the cabin gets the unlimited beverage package. So if you've got four adults in the cabin, they're all getting it, not just one and two. So the beverage package is free. What about the gratuities? Yes, you do have to pay the gratuities on the beverage package. So on a seven day cruise, you're looking at around $140 in gratuities. That price could go up in the near future. But if you look at the grand scheme of things and you look at pricing for an individual drink package, paying $140, even $150 a week for an unlimited beverage package can be a very good deal if you're going to use it. So what's included in this unlimited beverage package? It's unlimited alcoholic beverages and soda. Is there a dollar cap on these? Yes. It's usually around $15 per drink is your cap. So your high-end wines, your top shelf liquors are not gonna be included in this. You can upgrade your entire package or you can just pay the difference per drink if you're just gonna have a few of those, which is probably a good thing to do. Me and Jason, we have cruised with Norwegian a lot. We have never ordered a drink that exceeded that limit. So we've never had to pay the difference. And as far as sodas go, I'm a big soda drinker. I don't drink coffee, so that's my form of caffeine. And I literally will go get soda all day long. So they will not give you a can of soda. It's going to be fountain drinks or they're gonna put ice in a cup and pour the canned soda on top of it. So just keep that in mind if you're a snobby soda drinker like I am. <laughs> Bottle water's not included, especially coffee's not included, but you do get a good value in this free drink package. Okay, the second item is specialty dining. So depending on the type of cabin you're in and how many days your cruise is will depend on how many of these you're getting. This does apply only to guests one and two. You do have to pay a gratuity on this as well, but you're really looking at about $5 per person per meal. That for specialty dining is incredible. This to me is one of the best values in the free at sea because Norwegian does such a good job on the variety of food on board their ships. So about half of their venues are included at no charge and half of them are specialty, but you're getting at least one specialty dining meal per, you know, per person. And I think that's great. So it gives you the opportunity to go into those nicer specialty dining restaurants without actually having to pay for them. I love this. What are my favorite specialty dining restaurants, you ask? Well, let's see. Teppanyaki is definitely my favorite. Love, love, love teppanyaki. It's solid, always good. You get a little show with dinner. If you leave teppanyaki hungry, that's your fault because really it's as much as you wanna eat. Uh, La Bistro is our second favorite. Love La Bistro. Again, solid, good food. And then the ships that have Onda, that's gonna be my third. Really, I don't think you can go bad with any of them, but there's definitely some that you're gonna prefer over others. All right, let's talk about the next one, which is the Wi-Fi. Is it unlimited Wi-Fi? No. Um, I think right now the promo has changed a little bit and I think each person gets 150 minutes of Wi-Fi. Is this enough? Depends on what you're doing. For us who 
run a social media business, obviously it's not, we have to upgrade. But early on when we first started cruising with them and we weren't full-time in social media, it was enough. We would jump on, check Facebook, make a post, you know, answer an email or two and sign off. And that amount of minutes did last us the full seven day cruise. So if you're really wanting to disconnect and just every now and then check in on social media, that really is free Wi-Fi. And most of the ships are being upgraded to Starlink, so the internet's really good too. On Breakaway, it was lightning fast, really good. Okay, the next thing in Free at Sea is the excursion. So this one is a little hmm, because it says on their website, free excursions. It's not free excursions. It is a $50 per port, per cabin, shore excursion credit, okay? So not per person, per cabin, $50 per port per excursion. So if you want to do two excursions in the same port, yeah, they're going to give you $50 each one of those. It does have to be booked through the cruise line. You can book it in advance. You don't have to wait till you get on the ship or you can get on the ship and, and book it there as well. So just keep that in mind. It is not free excursions, but you are getting a good discount on these excursions. The only time I think I've used this where an excursion was completely free was in Juno, and it was really just the, the tram. So the tram comes in at like $35 or $40 per person, so one of us got a free excursion. <laughs> but for the most part, $50 per port discount. Okay, on to the next one, and that is the flights. Buy one, get one free airfare. This can be a great value. Flights are very expensive right now. I mean, right now, if you can drive to the port, you're probably better off because the flight costs are so high. But with this, you're getting a good value, but you're giving up some control. So basically you're saying, okay, Norwegian, for this cost that you're offering, you're gonna book my flights. So Norwegian is gonna go in and book the flight that's best for Norwegian. That means, you're gonna get to the ship on time. They're gonna make sure that you're gonna get there in plenty of time and you're not gonna miss your cruise. I mean, some things are out of their control, but for the most part, they're gonna do the absolute best they can. If you wanna fly in the day before, they'll actually give you a discount. They will give you a $25 discount to fly in the day before. You can fly in up to two days before or stay up to two days after your cruise, which is called an air deviation. I definitely recommend coming in before your cruise. Always, I've always said this, it doesn't matter if you're booking your air or if NCL is booking your air, come in the day before. It just takes so much stress off of you that you know you're at your port and you're not gonna miss your cruise. So when I say you're giving up control, that means that your two flight is gonna be good timing. Your back flight might not be so good. So I've seen people that get off the ship at 10 o'clock in the morning and their flight isn't until 10 p.m. at night. It doesn't happen often, but keep in mind, it can happen. We just used um, the NCL Air for our Jewel Cruise in April, and our flight times are fantastic. I mean, we leave here in Alexandria at 6 a.m., we're in San Diego by noon, and then the flight ends, I mean, the cruise ends in Vancouver, and we're on our flight at 12.45 p.m. I mean, really, I could not ask for better flight times, but it is hit and miss, just keep that in mind. Okay, I think that pretty much covers everything on the free at sea. Let's talk about free at sea pricing versus sail away pricing. So if you don't need any of that, say you live really close to the port and you're gonna drive, you're not a drinker, you're not gonna use Wi-Fi, and you feel like, you know, I don't need this free at sea. I just wanna go get on a cruise. Just what's the cheapest way to get on? That's what the sail away rate is. So you, this is something you can't book way in advance. So if you're gonna cruise two years from now, you're not gonna see a sail away rate. But within the year of the sailing, then you can find those sail away rates. And the closer it gets to the sailing, usually those sail away rates dip down. So that is something to keep in mind. If you book the sail away rate, you're not getting any of the free at sea. You're not getting a drink package, no specialty dining no Wi-Fi, but you do get that $50 per port shore excursion credit. So that's nice. So once you understand those two pricing points, with the free at sea, without the free at sea, then you can determine which is best for you.
Okay, cruise tip number two, freestyle cruising. This is what we absolutely love about Norwegian. There are no set dining times. And people that are used to other cruise lines and having an early dining or late dining, they're like, what? What do you mean there's no set dining time? There's not. You can go into any of the main dining rooms, into the buffet, into Oceans or the local, anytime you want and you have dinner. Specialty, you need to make reservations for because they're very small venues and they will book up quickly. Um, but as far as if you just need to go eat one night and you don't know what time or you don't know what you're gonna feel like doing that day or what's on the schedule, that's what's fantastic. Also, there are no formal nights. No formal nights. I love this. Me and Jason are not big dress up people. We go on vacation to be comfortable, to enjoy ourselves. So we don't like to put on a dress or a suit or anything like that. So we absolutely love, love, love that aspect. Now, can you wear t-shirts and shorts all the time? No. You're gonna have a couple of restaurants that have a minimum dress code Really, the women can kind of get away with anything, just look nice, you know, no shorts, no t-shirts, no tank tops, um, you, but you don't have to wear a dress, and it's pretty casual. For the men, pants, closed-toed shoes, collared shirt. I mean, really, that's pretty simple. Most people are gonna wear that anyway. So, freestyle cruising is awesome. I love that aspect of Norwegian. Tip number three is food. I mean, cruising, and food kind of go hand in hand. That's one of the highlights of going on vacation is trying new things. So I touched on the specialty dining and the free at sea. Everyone that has that free at sea offer has some specialty dining. Do some research, look at the menus, pick out the one or two restaurants that you want to eat at. Make those reservations as soon as you can. That way you're getting what you want, okay? Indulge, enjoy these. The specialty dining is really, really good but also the other food on the ship is pretty darn good too. Uh, to me, Garden Cafe is one of the better buffets out there in cruising. I can consistently go to Garden Cafe, doesn't matter if it's breakfast, lunch, or dinner, and get something I'm gonna like. I mean, let's talk about eggs for a second, okay? A lot of cruise lines, I will not eat the scrambled eggs. They're just runny, they're nasty, bleh. I have to go to the omelet station and get eggs made special if I'm gonna eat eggs. But on Norwegian, consistently on every ship we've been on, the eggs are good. I mean, that's just something little that I'm talking about, but it means a lot, you know, whenever you're hungry and you're ready to go get something to eat. Also, you've got, you've got a good variety here. So every ship's gonna have two to three main dining rooms. Again, you can go to any of these you want. Multiple specialty dining offerings. Some ships have other um, venues included. I know, for instance, on the the jewel class ship, so the Pearl, the Jewel, and the Jade, they have like a, an Asian restaurant that's included. No extra charge, you can just go in there and eat. On the Breakaway, there's the Shanghai Noodles, so there's other venues as well. And then there's Oceans and the local. So this is gonna be the pub, the 24 hour pub. Is it 24 hours? Well, technically no, if you're there at three and four o'clock in the morning, you might you know, not get to order. But for the most part, it's a 24 hour venue that you can go and get solid burgers, wings, hot dogs, um, fish and chips, desserts, salads, if you're wanting something healthy. And then they also have a dining room area where you can go at night and they'll have like a special, um, actually you can go in there for breakfast and order a nice breakfast. So this is a venue that's open all the time. It's included and it's a sit down, nice venue. So that's something that we really like. There is room service as well. The room service is free. They just charge a delivery fee. So I think it's like 10, $12 for a delivery fee anything other than a continental breakfast and you know you, you can order as much as you want you just have to pay that one delivery fee so I think that's a pretty good value as well when you are looking to choose which Norwegian ship I'm gonna go on look at the features of the ships so you're gonna look at the size of the ship because some people don't like big crowds some people like the big with a lot to do you're gonna look at what each ship has to offer for entertainment for activities for food venues you're gonna look 
look at the itinerary. So there's a lot that goes into this. And so we're gonna talk about new ships versus old ships. Some people say, always cruise on the new ships, they're always better, you're not gonna get as good on the old ships. And then you've got some that say, well, you know what, I really like that jewel class. I like that smaller ship. And I can say we have done both. We have done every one of the new ships and we've done the Pearl, which is a jewel class, it's an older ship. We absolutely loved the Pearl. We had a great experience on the Pearl. Um, the size of the ship was nice. Um, the venues were great. It felt like there was plenty to do on the ship. The entertainment was really good. There was plenty of activities. We loved that little Asian restaurant I was talking about earlier. We ate there quite a bit. Um, so don't say you have to do the new ships. Now, are the new ships great? Heck yeah, I love Prima. I mean, I think there's, you know, everyone's like, there's hit and misses on Prima, but overall, I think they knocked it out of the park with Prima. I love that ship. It's gorgeous. It's modern. It's got the food hall. The food hall is a fabulous idea. So they cut down the size of the buffet, but added this food hall where a lot of items that used to be specialty like Q, um, on some ships are now included in the food hall. And then that beautiful waterfront on deck eight is just amazing. So every ship has something to offer. Don't just look at the newer ships, take a look at the older ships. And also you're gonna get a better pricing on that older ship than you will the brand new ship. So take that into consideration too when you're looking to book. Okay, this next tip is a very quick tip. Fish swim forward. So not every ship, but most of the Norwegian ships, when you're on the cabin decks, you know how it is. You get on a ship and you're like, oh my God, everything looks exactly the same. Where is my cabin? Look down at the floor and there's fish on the floor and the fish are swimming forward. So now you know this way is forward and this way is aft. Okay, tip number six, get familiar with your ship. So there's a lot of ways you can do this. Once you've picked out the ship you want, there are videos on YouTube that will completely walk you through the ship. There are deck plans. Get familiar with everything your ship has to offer and where it is. That way when you get on board this massive cruise ship, you're like, I don't know where anything is. If you've done your research, you know exactly where to go, what to do, and you're gonna have a more enjoyable experience knowing what to expect when you get on board. This leads into tip number seven, download the app. So we talked about deck plans. Once you have that app downloaded, there are deck plans on there. So you can get familiar with the deck you're gonna be sleeping on, okay? It's best to go through that door near that elevator and it's, that's the closest point to my cabin. Or, okay, I'm forward on the ship, what's above and below me? How quickly can I get to the gym or how quickly can I get to the pool or the spa or the buffet or whatever is your interest, knowing where things are on the ship is very helpful. Not only that, the app is great because you can see kind of a, an overview of your cruise. You can look at what specialty dining restaurants are on your ship. You can make reservations. Once you get on board, the app changes. So you can still see a lot of what you could see before your cruise, but you can make specialty dining restaurants on board. Also, you can make show reservations on board depending on your ship, activity reservations. Um, you can get, see those deck plans. And then once you're on board, you can see your daily schedule. So they don't print the schedule anymore if you ask for a printed one you can get one but for the most part it's all in the app there's also a chat feature i think the chat feature is about ten dollars per person but then you're tapped into the ship's wi-fi and you're not worried about signing in and out to wi-fi you can just use that chat and leave your phone you know leave the wi-fi for other things so that's really a good feature and we have used that a lot Tip number eight, make reservations. So we've touched on this a little bit, but specifically, if you want specialty dining, make it in advance as far as you can. So typically, after final payment date, not when you've paid in full, because some people pay off early, but after the final payment date, then it opens up for specialty dining reservations. If you know that specifically you want this reservation on this time, make it as soon as you can. If you wait till you get on board, you can still make reservations, but you're not gonna get those key times. So a lot of times when you get on board, you're gonna eat at five o'clock or 8.30, 9 o'clock. And most of us wanna have that more, you know, 6.30, 7 o'clock dinner time. So just keep that in mind. Shows. 
Pre-COVID, you could book entertainment and shows before the cruise. Right now, you have to wait till you get on board to book those things. So watch that, that could change at any time. But as soon as you get on board, make those reservations. Actually, you don't even have to wait till you get on, get on board. When you're in the terminal, and you can see that ship, you can log into the ship's Wi-Fi and start making those reservations. Little tip for you. Tip number nine, take advantage of all the outdoor areas. So the waterfront, I think is a great concept. It's not on every ship, but it is on most. And it's usually on deck eight, and it goes either all the way around or almost all the way around the ship. You've got some great areas out there. There's just some areas you can just go sit and chill and enjoy watching the ocean. And then a lot of areas from the inside extend out. So the restaurants have outdoor seating. The bars have outdoor bars and outdoor seating. The views are spectacular. If you've got good weather and you have dinner at one of the specialty restaurants, go eat outside. Or even on Prima, the local extends outside. We had one of the best lunches ever at the local on Prima, sitting outside right where the water slide comes down, not the water slide, but the dry slide comes down. Beautiful views out there. And that's what we cruise for, right? We cruise for the ocean to be outside, to see everything that is out there, you know, the waves, the weather, the as you're approaching land or sailing away from land. So take advantage of that waterfront area and spend some time out there. Okay, tip number 10. You saw us do it on Breakaway. We've done it a bunch of times on previous cruises. This is something for a newbie cruiser you're probably not gonna do, but if you've cruised a lot and you go to these ports quite frequently, our tip is skip a port and go to the spa. Norwegian has some of the best thermal suites. And if it's a port day, sometimes you can get a good deal. So when we were on breakaway, a friend of ours, she did a, um, a massage treatment and they gave her the thermal suite pass for the day. How awesome is that? Now, me and Jason will either, depending on the itinerary and what's going on, sometimes we will get a spa pass for the week. Sometimes we'll just do a day pass. But if there's a good thermal suite on any ship, we're going to be in there. Because to me, that again is part of cruising, that rest and relaxation and rejuvenation. And the spa does that for us. I don't necessarily, I've never gotten a massage. I've never done anything like that. It's the thermal suite for us we love it so to me instead of spending money on an excursion take that excursion money and get a day pass to the spa and the reason I say do it on a port day is because most of the people are off the ship in port and you've got that thermal suite almost to yourself so on breakaway a ship of 4,000 people there was about 10 people in the thermal suite it was nice so that's a good good tip from us to you. Tip number 11, book a sailing that has a stop in one of Norwegian's private islands. They have two. There is Great Stirrup Key in the Bahamas and Harvest K, which is off the coast of Belize. These islands are both beautiful. They both have a lot to offer. I will tell you that Great Stirrup Key does everything extends from the ship. So you can get lunch for free and your drink package extends for free onto the ship. So you're gonna get a little bit more bang for your buck out of Great Stirrup K, Great Stirrup Key, whichever you wanna call it. Um, that is gonna be an Eastern Caribbean itinerary. For a Western Caribbean itinerary, you're gonna get a stop at Harvest K, and they do call it K here for sure because of the arrangement that Norwegian made with the country of Belize to buy this island, everything does not extend off. And this is, and this is not Norwegian's fault. This is the country of Belize wanted the people from the Norwegian ships to come to their island and buy local food and buy drinks from them. So there are restaurants on the island there are bars on the island but these will all be at an extra cost now the ship is right there if you want to hop back up on the ship and have lunch you absolutely can do that i love both of these islands but i will tell you i love the pool area at harvest k it's this big massive pool 
there's plenty there's usually plenty of seating there we've never had a problem getting a, um, a lounger unfortunately we didn't miss it on this last cruise so i'm really bummed about that because i was really looking forward to spending the day on harvest k but take a look at that both of their private islands are really good tip number 12 planned for the themed parties norwegian does a great job at themed parties so there's going to be an 80s party pack your 80s gear we had so much fun at the 80s party some friends of ours went all costumed out we didn't but we had the the glasses we had the little shimmy um like madonna gloves it was so much fun so we had a little bit of a costume going not a whole lot some people went all out so much fun if you grew up you know i was born in 1978 so my childhood was the 80s know that music love that music had a great time at the 80s party there's also going to be a glow party so they do have glow items that they pass out but if you want to bring your own um we did one cruise where some friends of ours brought enough bracelets that they were handing out bracelets that was a lot of fun and they had glow sunglasses that you have to kind of put together ahead of time and then you know you've got your face glowing uh, there's also white parties white night parties so if you know these are there and you want to pack special outfits for them then you're you feel like you're even more of the party so take a look at your sailing on a seven night sailing you should have all three of these they're a lot of fun tip number 13 this is something that i've taken advantage of before and i think is a great great value and that is bidding to upgrade your cabin so after you've um, booked your cabin you're going to get this email about bidding to upgrade and depending on what type of cabin you have booked will vary on what you can bid for so for instance um, we have a cabin booked on the Jewel, which is an interior cabin, and we have the options to bid to upgrade to an ocean view or a balcony. So I did put in my upgrade to bid for a balcony. Fingers crossed I get that, but that is also a money-saving option. If you're okay with an interior cabin, book the interior, bid to upgrade, and possibly you can get that balcony cabin for a whole lot less. If it's peak season and you know this cruise is probably gonna sell out, you're probably not gonna get your upgrade. But for instance, on the sailing we're doing, it's a repositioning cruise from San Diego to Vancouver. Looking at the ship, doesn't look like it's real full yet. So fingers crossed we will get our bid. Um, we have also, booked a standard balcony and bid to upgrade to a spa balcony. We did get that one. And on that one, I put in the minimum bid, but we were sailing off season. The ship wasn't full. I got the bid and I was so excited because then we had a thermal suite all week for a lot less than if we would have gone and bought that thermal suite package. So take advantage of those. Here's another tip for you. You should be booking through a travel agent. If you are booking through a travel agent, call your travel agent and say, hey, how full is this ship? Because I can go in and look I can't get an exact number, but I can see, oh, there's a lot of balconies available or there's a lot of this available or specifically spa cabins. I can tell you exactly how many spa cabins are available. So then that kind of gives you an idea of if you want to do that upgrade, do I need to put in the, can I get away with the minimum or do I need to up my bid a little bit? I love this idea. I think it's great. And we have definitely taken advantage of it and gotten really good value out of it. Tip number 14, if you are a solo cruiser, Norwegian is probably a great cruise line for you. All of their newer ships, starting with Breakaway and above, have studio cabins. The studio cabins are really a fantastic thing for solo travelers for two reasons. One, you've got a cabin that's made for one person. So you've got a bed that's not taking up the entire space. You know, you've got storage and things like that that is good for one person. And because it's a solo cabin, you're not paying that double occupancy rate for a standard cabin. You've got a little bit of a break on your cost. Also, the studio area is completely locked off. You can't get into the studios without your key card. So ladies, if you're traveling solo, this is a safety measure. So you, no one can get into your cabin area unless they are also in that area. 
the solo studios also offer their own lounge. So you can go have breakfast or afternoon snacks, or there's even a bar in there just for the solo travelers. They put on special events for the solo travelers. I think it's a great, great program. And I can't think of any other cruise line that takes solo cruising to this level. It's really great. Last but not least, my final tip. If you cruise Norwegian a lot, this is going to be a good one for you. And that is to buy Norwegian stock. Right now, stock is at an all time low. I mean, we're still seeing those COVID stock prices. Um, we bought stock, we should have waited. We bought stock around $20 a share, which at the time I thought was great. But then COVID happened and it nosedived from there. But I'm still happy that I have that 100 shares of Norwegian stock because we do cruise with them a lot. And every single time we cruise with Norwegian, we get onboard credit. So it's something like I'm going to invest anyway. Um, I didn't pull it like out of my pocket. I just went to, I have investments already and just moved some of the money over to buy Norwegian stock. And then I've got that great benefit out of it. So I hope these tips were helpful for you. I hope that if you haven't sailed Norwegian, you will soon. I am also a travel agent. If I can ever help you in booking a cruise with Norwegian or any other cruise line, just let me know. My email is down below. It's travel at eecctravels.com. And I hope these tips have helped and we'll see you next time. Happy cruising.